Hi, Angels of the Sky channel is online, and straight to the point. This story was supposed to be part of a video about the American little noticeable 5th generation fighter Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. But its competitor in the ATF competition turned out to be such an unusual and impressive aircraft that I decided to tell a separate story about it in much more detail. The story began at a time when the fighters of the so-called 4th generation were already flying or being commissioned. 1981 The United States Air Force announces the launch of the ATF Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, a program to create a new fighter aircraft to achieve air superiority. According to the plan, he was supposed to replace the F-15 Eagle. The customer formulated the following requirements for the new fighter, high maneuverability, supersonic cruising speed without the use of afterburner, a shortened takeoff and landing distance and the most important use of technology for a significant reduction in radar and infrared signature. The U.S. Air Force sent out these demands to the leading national aircraft manufacturers, including Lockheed, Boeing, General Dynamics, McDonnell Douglas, Northrop. After analyzing the proposals from each of the firms, the U.S. Air Force Commission at the end of 86 identified the leading developers for the ATF program, Lockheed and Northrop, and this choice was quite natural. Manufacturers already had experience in creating aircraft using stealth technology. Lockheed has been producing the F-117 Nighthawk tactical stealth aircraft since 83, and much earlier in the 60s it created the famous strategic reconnaissance SR-71 Blackbird capable of flying at speeds exceeding the speed of sound, this aircraft also used technologies to reduce radar and infrared visibility. Northrop firm at the beginning of the 80s developed the B-2 Spirit Heavy Strategic Bomber, where the concept of stealth was put at the forefront. The rest of the companies participating in the competition did not stand aside, Boeing and General Dynamics joined Lockheed, and Northrop joined McDonnell Douglas. Thus, strong teams were formed which, according to the terms of the contract, had to create two flight prototypes in four years, and then the U.S. Air Force would choose the winner based on the test results. In addition to the aircraft designers, the engine builders also competed in the competition, on one of the flight prototypes of each team should have Pratt Whitney engines, and on the other General Electric. A lot of work has begun, which by 1990 should have borne fruit. On June 22, 1990, Edwards Air Base, California, Northrop, together with McDonnell Douglas, presented the first prototype of the YF-23 fighter for the first time to the public. The aircraft amazed many with its unusual appearance, its competitor YF-22, which was created in Lockheed, looked much more conservative in comparison with it and resembled F-15, F-18 fighters in layout. Although it would seem that F-15, F-18 are McDonnell Douglas aircraft and this is a company and a team with Northrop and the prototype they created was strikingly different from any fighter of that time. We smoothly approached the design overview and here, believe me, there is something to pay attention to. Engineers Northrop and McDonnell Douglas relied on the maximum reduction in radar and infrared visibility, while not depriving the aircraft of good maneuverability, and here the experience in creating the Northrop B-2 Spirit Bomber, which had already been built and was being tested. Many solutions used on B-2 were applied to the prototype fighter. For the YF-23 airframe, low reflective external shapes were chosen, so if you look at the plane from above, you can see that its contours are formed by straight parallel lines, this significantly reduces the radar signature. Another solution taken from the B-2 flat engine nozzle is located in the upper plane of the airframe. This solution allowed to reduce the visibility in the infrared range. The surfaces adjacent to the engine nozzles are lined with special heat dissipating material that can withstand high temperatures. It was also used on American space shuttles. The engine air intakes have S-shaped channels to screen the blades of the first compressor stages. The inner tract was additionally covered with the radio-absorbing material. The wing is diamond-shaped with the same sweep along the trailing and leading edges. The front toe is deflected and the trailing edge of the wing is equipped with a flaperon and aileron. They are also used as an air brake, the aileron deflects upward, and the flaperon downward simultaneously. A similar solution was implemented on the B-2 bomber where split wing flaps were used for braking. A separate conversation is an unusual tail unit, instead of the classic stabilizers and vertical fins, two rotary surfaces are used, placed at an angle of about 50 degrees to the vertical. 
this solution significantly reduced radar signature without loss of maneuverability. The cockpit is single seat and slightly raised relative to the wing to provide a good view for the pilot. The missile compartment is located in the fuselage between the engine nacelles. For production samples, it was planned to install an aircraft cannon. Serial samples were to receive a radar with a circular view, the antennas of which were to be located in the toes of the wing and fuselage. But for the sake of stealth, the aircraft had to rely on passive detection systems and incoming information from satellites and OX. YF-23 is equipped with fly-by-wire control system also because the aircraft is statically unstable to improve maneuverability. Let me remind you that according to the terms of the competition, both teams had to create two flight prototypes each, the first aircraft was assigned the PAV-1 index in dark paint and the second in PAV-2. The first prototype was powered by Pratt & Whitney YF-119 engines, and the second by General Electric VF-120. The first flight of the PAV-1 prototype took place on August 27, 1990. PAV-2 took off two months later on October 26. Both aircraft for the entire test period made a total of 50 sorties, 34 first prototype and 14 seconds. The total flight time of both prototypes was almost 66 hours. During the tests, the Northrop engineers fully confirmed the laid down characteristics, both in invisibility and in maneuverability. For example, the first prototype reached a non afterburner cruising speed of Mach 1.6, and also confirmed high maneuverability at supersonic speed. However, unlike the Lockheed prototype, test launches of missiles were not carried out. Flight testing of prototypes of both rival teams continued until December 90th. On April 23, 1991, the United States Air Force announced the winner. It was the Lockheed YF-22 project, which later became known as the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. Pratt & Whitney won the engine building competition. According to the official representatives of the Air Force, several factors were the motive for this choice. The Commission considered that the F-22 had more potential for development at a lower cost. The representatives of the Air Force were confident that Lockheed and Pratt and & Whitney would meet the plan time and money. According to the ATF program for 1990, it was supposed to spend $63.5 billion and get 750 fighters, but about how many F-22 actually managed to build and what problems the program faced, you will learn from the planned plot about this aircraft. And now informal reasons, guesses and assumptions. The most popular point of view is that the Air Force preferred higher maneuverability over stealth, and indeed the F-22 prototype was considered much more maneuverable at subsonic speeds, largely due to the presence of a controlled thrust vector but at the same time significantly lost to the competitor in radar and infrared visibility. YF-23, in addition to its invisibility, had a large wing and fuselage, which could potentially expand the range of combat use due to the increased capacity of the fuel tanks. That is, he was more suited to the role of a little noticeable long-range interceptor, in the case of such an application for YF-23 it was not necessary to enter into close maneuverable combat, which, by the way, came in the end. In many exercises, the Raptor pilots are automatically credited with a defeat if the interception of the target did not take place at a long distance and the situation developed into a close maneuverable air battle. But this is a spoiler for the F-22 storyline. There is another version that most of all fits into the realities of that time, representatives of the Air Force and the US Congress quite rightly could give victory in the ATF competition to Lockheed, having implemented the F-117 strike aircraft project, it was left without orders and government funding. While Northrop launched the ultra-expensive B-2 Spirit Bomber project at that time, having mastered more than $20 billion in public investment by 90. After the announcement of the results of the competition, the prototypes of YF-23 were no longer taken off from them, the engines with other equipment were removed and sent for storage to the Flight Research Center NASA Drayton. Since 1996, both prototypes have been on display. The PAV-1 is on display at the museum at Edwards Air Force Base, the PAV-2 is at the Hawthorne Air Museum in the suburbs of Los Angeles. This is the fate of this really unusual and rather promising fighter that never became serial. That's all for me, all the best to you.